Big news in college basketball today as Marcus Carr, the Minnesota transfer, top five transfer in the portal this entire offseason, has committed to Texas. He was also considering Kansas, Kentucky, Louisville, and playing professionally in Australia briefly. It really went down to playing overseas and going to Texas. Other options never made a ton of sense. I mean, Louisville made sense a little bit. But you look at a team like Kansas with Remy Martin and Joseph Yesifu, that fit never made a ton of sense. And Kentucky has three-point guards. I just didn't see that working either so ultimately it made a ton of sense that texas would land marcus carr if he decided to go to college last season carr had nine points 19 points per game four rebounds per game and five assists per game guiding minnesota to an early season ranking they beat iowa on christmas day but ultimately they were not able to stay healthy gabe kalsher struggled he was hurt liam robbins was hurt and marcus carr kind of had to do all of it by himself which led to a lot of losses and that's kind of what marcus carr is he's been inefficient often in his career but he's never had a ton of help on his teams especially at minnesota i mean last year they did have or two years ago that daniel Oturu, but they didn't have a ton of shooters still Last year, they were one of the worst shooting teams in the Big Ten. But now you fast forward to this season, there's a ton of talent on this Texas team. Marcus Carr is going to be the lead guard next to Courtney Ramey and Andrew Jones. You bring in Timmy Allen from Utah at 17 points per game. You have Trey Mitchell at 19 points per game at UMass at the five spot. He can stretch the floor. He can pip, pick and pop and hit a three. You have Dylan Disu, who led the SEC in rebounding at Vanderbilt. You bring in Jalen Tyson, a four-star recruit. You have Brock Cunningham back, who's one of the best defenders in the Big 12. He brings a lot of defense to the table. He's not much of an offensive piece, but he's going to carve out 10 to 15 minutes of really good defense and he fits what Chris Beard wants to do perfectly you have Christian Bishop who started every game for Creighton the past two years he won them the game against UC Santa Barbara in the first round of the NCAA tournament hitting two free throws even though he's a well below average foul shooter but he's a really good athlete can play the four and the five he can block shots he can uh, you know throw down a lob he does a lot of things that makes the team better He's not going to start for this team more than likely because of how deep it is. How I would construct the starting lineup is probably going Carr at the 1. Then you can go Jones or Ramey at the 2. I'd probably go Jones. And then Timmy Allen at the 3. Disu at the 4. And Mitchell at the 5. And the thing about that lineup is Allen is not much of a shooter, but he's a very versatile scorer. Really strong inside. Can hit a mid-range. He's just not much of a shooter yet. And maybe that'll have come in his senior season. But Disu and Mitchell can both hit shots from the perimeter so there's still enough shooting in that lineup, especially with Carr and probably Jones starting, that you can hit a lot of threes and you can do a lot of different things on the offensive end. There's a lot of size in that lineup. And even you can take D. Sewer Allen out in the first five minutes after the you know under-16 timeout and put in Ramey. And if you need more scoring punch, you put Ramey in. But if you want more defense and you want more size, you go with that lineup. And then you put in Brock Cunningham at some point. You can put in Christian Bishop. You know, the biggest thing about this team is how is how are certain players going to take to their role? Because a lot of these guys were stars at their previous team. I mean, Dylan D.C. was the second guy behind Scottie Pippen Jr., but Timmy Allen's been the guy at Utah for a number of years now. Christian Bishop, he's kind of going to play a similar role to what he did at Creighton. But that's a knock uh, that I've seen people have on Texas is how are all these players who weren't on great teams prior going to take to new roles and how does that translate to winning I think it'll translate to winning fine because Chris Beard is a great coach a top 10 coach at worst in college basketball I'd say easily top five and then ultimately I think talent is going to play itself out I think the players on the team are going to you know see hey we have talent to win a national title they're not going to let their you know what they want to do personally guide what they end up doing on the court because that could be detrimental to a team but overall when you look at winning teams you have guys that take you that take steps back and aren't going to throw up 20 shots a game you have guys that are going to play winning basketball and I think that's Chris Beard's brand of basketball I mean there he hasn't had a really good offensive team since you know his national championship team that lost to Virginia but I think that this team could be really good on the offensive end. Chris Beard's not known as a great offensive coach. He's known more as a defensive coach, which a lot of credit goes to Mark Adams in that aspect. The now Texas Tech head coach, he was the associate head coach for Chris Beard prior and the defensive coordinator. I think Chris Beard's going to have a very good offense just because of the talent on the team. I mean, last year at Texas Tech, you had two guys that you could really con- – you know, rely on to score the ball with Mac McClung and TJ Shannon. But when they weren't scoring, Texas Tech was not scoring. So they had to win on the defensive end. I think Texas Texas could be really good on the offensive end this season because of the pieces they have. 
these guys don't score, you know, 15 plus points per game by accident. That happens because they're really gifted players, and I think I think you'll ultimately see that play out on the court this season. Marcus Carr, 39% from the field last year, 33% from deep. He's a much better player than that. He can hit a step back jumper really well. He can create space for himself, and he can also facilitate. He's a better passer than he gets credit for which I think we'll see a lot of this season. He might not average 20 points a game like he did last year, but he could average you know, 15, 16 points per game, lead the team in scoring, and have five or six assists per game. He really fills up the stat sheet, and I think this is the smartest move for Carr to bolster his NBA draft stock because we see a ton of guys on bad teams put up numbers, but how do NBA teams put that into perspective? Because ultimately in the NBA, the biggest thing you want to do is win basketball games, and if a guy who's never won before, you, are you going to draft him? You know, maybe not, especially if he's inefficient. So for Marcus Carr to go to a team that's going to win games, can he shoot 45% from the field and 38% from deep? That will definitely bolster his draft stock up a lot more than it currently was because he wasn't going to be drafted. Maybe would have been on a two-way deal. But now he heads to Texas where he's going to play a big role. He's going to start from day one. He's probably going to lead the team in scoring. And even if he doesn't, he's going to lead the team in assists and he's going to be the guy who has the ball in his hands late in the game. Texas is going to win a lot of games. I have them only behind Gonzaga in my rankings that I just posted. Gonzaga's ahead just because I think they're the best team. You know, you have Drew Timmy, you have Chet Holmgren, a lot of pieces around him. But Texas is second ahead of Purdue, ahead of UCLA, and ahead of Michigan who round out my top five. Texas is going to be a really good team next season. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. More content about college basketball to come. Obviously, commitments are, you know, dying down a little bit because the transfer portal is there's not a ton of players left in the portal because the season starts in three and a half months but we'll bring in a lot of different content breaking down rosters and other things of that nature so definitely stay tuned to the channel